What is going on, Pats Nation? It's Patriots Global here back with another video. And yes, we're going to be starting off this post game loss here. New England Patriots, of course, losing to Kansas City at home, score being 26 to 10. But of course, this video really should just be called the, uh, the good, the bad, and the ugly. And if you thought to yourself, oh dear God, this video is just going to be Patriots Global going off and ranting, you'd be correct. I feel like off the bat, I have to make my first loser the NFL. And the NFL is a loser here in this situation because why in God's name do we play this game? Patriots players and, well, I can't say Patriots players, Patriots player because there was only one and a player on the Chiefs, ironically both quarterbacks, both had COVID. And we rushed to get test after test after result after result and pushed these players, these coaches to get onto a plane, of course, the New England Patriots because the Chiefs played at home and traveled all the way to Kansas City to play this game. Why was it not postponed? We were supposed to play this game on Sunday at around 425. We played it the next day at seven. But yet for some reason, when it came to, I believe it was the Steelers and Titans game, that game is getting pushed all the way back to October 25th. So why did that game get postponed due to COVID reasons? But in this case, the Patriots and Chiefs game, they made sure to have it the next day and rush these players into a situation where essentially they're risking their lives. This, this was not a safe idea for either team, especially the Patriots who had to travel. So personally, I don't agree with that. The NFL was in the wrong for doing so. And yet somehow the New England Patriots are the team getting investigated by the NFL to see if they followed COVID protocols correctly, even though a Chiefs player also had COVID, but for some reason they're not getting investigated. It's just the Patriots, even though there was only one player, Cam Newton, who had COVID. Now, player wise, we're going to go into the next loser because obviously in a game like this, there's probably more losers than there is winners. Uh, and the, the biggest one has to be Brian Hoyer. Brian Hoyer, in God's name, what was that performance? Now, if you know me personally, you see my videos, you see my Twitter, you see my Instagram, of course, all that link in the description box below if you do want to go ahead and follow that. I said that, look, I get why Bill Belichick is playing uh, Brian Hoyer. It's a classic Bill Belichick move, but in my own personal opinion, I would play Jared Stidham. Jared Stidham is more athletic. Jared Stidham has the more overall talent, but the only thing Brian Hoyer has over him is that veteran aspect, and he knows the Patriots system better. Now, because of that, I was expecting Brian Hoyer to take care of the ball way better than he did. In fact, I would say that he took care of the ball worse than Jared Stidham did. And why in God's name... Bill Belichick, Josh McDaniel, they did not put Stidham in until the fourth quarter. I have no idea. What they should have done is come out in the second half and started Jared Stidham. Brian Hoyer ended up finishing this game 15 out of 24 pass attempts for 130 yards, zero touchdowns, and one interception. Also got strip sacked. And then he also, right before the end of the second half. For some reason, God knows why, Brian Hoyer, again, the guy who Belichick essentially played because he has more experience, he knows the system, he's been in the league for 12 years now. The dude thought we had a timeout left and we did not. He did the last thing you should do in that case. He took a sack. He scrambled outside of the pocket. He tried to extend the play. Nothing came out of it except a sack. Dude tried to call a timeout right after he got sacked. Didn't even realize that you don't have a timeout left. Not to mention the fact that he was just inaccurate as anything. And look, here's the thing. Did Jared Stidham play outstanding? No. I think a lot of people in another case would like to put Jared Stidham on their losers list, but I wouldn't. Now, Jared Stidham finished 5 for 13 for 60 yards, one touchdown, and two interceptions, but I don't think that really goes off to show the ability he had. Now, let's keep in mind that if you are Jared Stidham, you have been the third string quarterback, which personally I didn't really agree with. Now, I think in any other 
offseason or even if Jared Stidham didn't get injured during training camp, he would have easily been this backup quarterback. But because he missed some time due to injury during training camp, had some issues because of that injury, that's essentially why Brian Hoyer got that second string quarterback job behind Cam Newton. Every single game so far, Jared Stidham has been inactive, a healthy scratch, not even suited up. So not, not even getting the chance. And then let's also remember the fact that he was a third string quarterback. So he wasn't getting much snaps in practice towards the end of training camp. He missed some time because of injury. And then they finally throw him in in the fourth quarter when it's already a tough situation for any quarterback, not just, you know, a second or a, a third string quarterback, second year player in Jared Stidham, but for any quarterback in the NFL to come back from a deficit like the New England Patriots had against the Chiefs to do so to do so in the fourth quarter against a pretty solid Chiefs defense. I think that secondary is actually ranked fourth in the NFL. That is asking a lot. And he put up a touchdown to Nikhil Harry, a really good pass, which is something that Brian Hoyer could not do throughout the other three full quarters that he was playing. For the majority of this week, Jared Stidham pretty much believed that he was going to be that third string quarterback healthy scratch again. Then last minute, Brian Hoyer and Jared Stidham get told, okay, you guys are going to be active in this game. Hoyer, you'll be the starter. Stidham, chances are you're probably not going to play. Fourth quarter, he ends up being told, yeah, you're going to play. I think if Jared Stidham was the second string quarterback and he had at least a week of preparation, he would have performed a whole lot better. So I think anyone in a logical situation should not be getting mad at Jared Stidham. Did he throw two interceptions? Yes. One of those interceptions, which was a pick six, not his fault by any means. That was Julian Edelman's fault, which speaking of Julian Edelman is my next loser. Now, before that pick six, which was Julian Edelman's complete fault, that was not Jared Stidham's fault by any means, I believe the, the, de the deficit was about 10 points. Now, that doesn't mean the Patriots were going to win, but that is a lot more easy to come back from than I believe it was at least two touchdowns at that point. Edelman ultimately ended up finishing this game with three receptions for 35 yards and a long catch of 19 yards also had a pretty significant drop. Now, that one drop was not the pick six. This was another play. Looked like he had the ball towards the end, though. Popped out, and it was an incomplete pass. As for that pick six, had the ball, then dropped the ball right into the defender's hands. Chiefs player ran it back, and that's a pick six against Jared Stidham. Not his fault. I also want to add the fact that since the start of last season, Julian Edelman has 11 dropped passes, which is the most out of anybody in the league. No player in this league has had any more than eight drops in that span of time. So I'm not really sure what exactly it is with Julian Edelman as of late the past couple of seasons, but drops have been pretty significant for him, and they're in pretty significant ways. You know, he just caused a pick six. I remember it was, I believe, last season against the Ravens where he also had a drop. I think that ended up becoming a fumble, and the Ravens defensive player went and returned it for a defensive touchdown. It's better to just be quiet within your game than to try to do more than what you're capable of and then just causing more harm. I still love Jules. He is still fantastic, but the Patriots need receiver help, and I think that that you know, just proved this even more. Now, to make things a little bit more positive, let's hop into my first winner here. That's going to be wide receiver Demir Bird. Demir Bird looked really, really pretty good out there. You know, there was some times where I'm like, ah, why did you do that? Why did you not try to jump the route? Why did, you know, wh what were you doing in this case? But for the most part, I liked what I saw from him. Whether it was Brian Hoyer, Jared Stidham, they all pretty much liked to seem to go to Demir Bird. I mean, he didn't have a crazy amount of receptions. He only had five receptions, but he finished the game with 80 yards and a long catch of 30. I think we finally got to see a little bit more of that speed that we've been waiting for. I mean, all around, he was easily the Patriots' best receiver in this game. 
But I do also want to make one other receiver here a winner for this game, which will be my second winner, and that's going to be wide receiver Gunnar Olszewski. Look, Gunnar Olszewski did not do too much in this game, um, but I also did not see him too much. We'll have to see exactly how much snaps he played, what the percentage of offensive snaps he played was, which should come out tomorrow. So currently, we don't have that, but I didn't see him on the field too much, and I didn't expect to see him too much. I didn't expect him to really be a factor. So... I'm not all that worried about that situation, but you know, he was able to record one reception for 11 yards, but he's on this list because of how big he came up. Now, this actually was not even intended for him. This pass was intended for Julian Edelman, who, as you probably could have imagined, was not able to hang on to the ball during that play. Gunnar Olszewski was in the vicinity ended up making a really, really good Madden-esque type play. The ball ended up, you know, going up in the air. Uh, he was able to track it down, get on the ground, and grab the reception. I believe it was on a third down play, too. Just really, really good concentration by Gunnar Olszewski, and I'm really hoping to see more of him as the season progresses. But again, I wasn't expecting too much from Olszewski just for the lone fact that, you know, he's coming back just this week. Just found out today that, today that he was being activated, and it's not like Cam Newton was even in this game. He doesn't really have much of a connection here with you know Hoyer or Stidham we heard that he was having a pretty good connection you know with Cam so again not all that worried Speaking of players who just came back for the first time this season can we give it up for running back Damian Harris my next winner on this list have a day Damian freaking Harris dude Sonny Michelle gets placed on injured reserve we haven't seen you yet your first game ever starting in the NFL, you come in, 17 rush attempts, 100 yards, long run of 41 yards, and let's keep in mind, this is against the Kansas City Chiefs. You know, a pretty decent defense. Uh, they have a little, struggled definitely a little bit more in defending the run. Obviously, Chris Jones being out was a pretty big blow, but still definitely a better defense, a better run defense than a good amount of NFL teams in the league. And let's also remember that the Patriots' offensive line was completely jumbled. It's like someone threw it into a cup and shook it up. Your starters, some of your starters weren't there. All your other players were just significantly moved around. Some kind of went in and out with some injuries and whatnot. And he was still able to come in and eclipse 100 yards in his first game, which is something Sonny Michel did once since the Patriots' AFC Championship game against the Kansas City Chiefs during the playoffs in 2019, in which they went to Super Bowl 53. Honestly, I'm just super excited to see more of Damian Harris, especially over the next couple of weeks with Sonny Michelle at least being out for two more games. Him becoming, it looks like, the lead running back. Um, he's going to show what he's made of. And if he can continue to play like he did today, Sonny Michelle coming back, I don't see him becoming the starter. Now, my next loser on this list is one I kind of wish that I talked a little bit about earlier on in this video, and that is going to be the damn refs of the NFL. What in God's name is it when it's the Patriots and the Chiefs playing? Can, can someone please let me know what is going on in that scenario? Last time the Patriots played the Chiefs regular season, just last season in Gillette, the Patriots got screwed over from winning the game. Because they ruled Nikhil Harry out on a touchdown that was clearly his, clearly got in. And then they also didn't call defensive pass interference on Philip Dorsett. This season, the same type of situation happens. When Tace Winovich comes in, clearly it's a strip sack. Shalee Calhoun is able to pick up the ball before it even touches the ground. And for some reason, the whistle is blown dead. Now, Shalik continued to run it back, and it looked like he knew, no, I got this ball. And they just kept blowing the whistle. And then the refs ended up ruling the play as just a sack. When as clear as day, easily anybody could see that that was a strip sack picked up by Shalik Calhoun, Patriots ball. And it was in Chiefs territory, so... Easily, the Patriots should have been able to put points up on the board there. But no, yet again, for some reason, the Patriots got screwed over big time in an obvious call against the Kansas City Chiefs. And really, my last big winner of this game is going to be the Patriots defense as a unit. You know, I think a lot of people have gotten on this defense, including myself, and I think rightfully so, but this is a easily top three offense in the league, if not the best offense in the league, and... 
they came to play. Essentially, most of these points that the Kansas City Chiefs got is not really the defense's fault. Uh, it was more so kind of refs and um, offense, of course, because of that pick six that, of course, the defense had no part in whatsoever. But they were able to hold the Kansas City Chiefs to six points in the first half, which was just two field goals. Second half, they were able to hold them to zero points. Third quarter, just seven And realistically, this defense should have forced three turnovers against a very careful Kansas City Chiefs uh, offense. Patrick Mahomes hasn't thrown an interception yet this season, should have thrown two this game. One to Devin McCourty and two to J.C. Jackson. Two players, two veterans at this point that you very much expect to make those big plays. The Devin McCourty drop that was supposed to be an interception right in the beginning of the game couldn't couldn't believe it at that point that started to dictate the game for me when that play happened I kind of figured how this game was just going to end could not believe he dropped it at JC Jackson also three defenders I believe in the vicinity uh, where Patrick Mahomes threw the ball JC Jackson should have had that at least one of the guys should have but it looked like JC Jackson thought another guy was going to get it and another interception lost here but Gilmore was able to force a fumble uh, that the Patriots were able to recover I am just beyond thrilled about how this defense was able to play, even though there were times that they did have some missed opportunities. They were able to hold Patrick Mahomes to just throwing 229 yards, a total of 94 rushing yards, and a time of possession with 28 minutes and 26 seconds, with a third down completion percentage of 36.36%. Uh, That makes me extremely confident in this defense and extremely confident in this team. There is no doubt in my mind if Cam Newton is in this game, the Patriots win this. They lost because of the offense. If the offense was able to get going, put points up on the board, hands down, the team wins this game. I mean, the Patriots finished with 172 total passing yards, but they had 185 rushing yards. They had a longer time of possession offensively than the Chiefs did with 31 minutes and 34 seconds. And they had a better third down completion percentage with 40%. But those four turnovers that they lost really did not help this team. That's going to be it for today's video though, guys. Ultimately, we are just going to have to see what happens next week. Do the Patriots can't get Cam Newton back? Do they not get him Cam Newton back? And if they don't get him back, who is going to be the starting quarterback if he's not back, which let's hope he is, it better be Jared still. It's going to be it for this one, though. Like I said, make sure you give this video a big thumbs up and subscribe to the channel for all of your New England Patriots news. Comment below your thoughts on this game. But other than that, I will catch you guys in my next video.